This week on Dr. Drew After Dark. I don't know what that sort of like threshold a, is. What point is anal dangerous immediately? <laughs> the lingo moves fast. Here. I'm in the cool kids club now. Yeah. <laughs> don't say that. Thanks, Ian. Good luck with that. That escalated quickly. <laughs> well, no, it didn't. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Welcome, everybody. Dr. Drew After Dark, 818-253-1693 is that number. And, of course, keep the emails coming. I've got some good ones today at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. Appreciate you guys listening and supporting the show, supporting the people that support us, uh, tolerating us, if that's what it takes, and calling, too, live. Look for the look for the announcements for when we are taking live calls, and please do feel free to call in. Today, Bridget Fetessy, you've seen her on Joe Rogan. Her podcast is Walk-In's Welcome Podcast. I've been on her podcast. Is that aired yet? Is that It airs in... It'll air before this. So, yes. So, it, it has aired. <laughs> it Fantastic. Has aired. And so, uh, we had a nice chat. And I said, get her on after dark. This will be perfect. Thank so, you for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm excited. So, so to talk about your career a little bit. What, what's happened, where you've been, what the arc of that has been? <sighs> that know. could take the whole hour. No, don't do that. Just... Um, I, we, I, I started as a writer um, and then always wanted to be a writer. I got my first real gig at Playboy. And I was doing the sex column there once I begged them to give me a weekly column, basically. And then I ended up doing the Playboy Advisor in the magazine, which for me was a big, iconic moment. And then I got caught in the crossfire of the culture wars. And at 2015 hit, it, I started noticing some things that were strange just within... I was always kind of a liberal, considered myself liberal. I noticed some things on the left that were kind of hypocritical. They were making fun of Melania's shoes and it felt very not feminist. And then I started calling those things out and realized you really weren't allowed to do that and ended up getting, um, started writing not about politics, more about culture and social stuff. Mm. And yeah, then now and Then you now got here shit on for that, of course. Yep, and then I was, so then I was just always freelance writing and now I have a monthly column at Spectator Magazine where I write, it just depends. This, this month I wrote about moving to the suburbs. And Chad, is that the article you read, Chad? Correct. And he liked it. Sure did. He's a discerning uh, chap. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's not easy to impress. So that is true. I yeah. yeah, I know. I I really always thought I would hate the suburbs, and I always had a, a resistance to them. Even being a kind of Gen X kid who grew up in a suburb, I was like, I'm never going back there again. Where'd you grow up? <laughs> um, I moved all over, but I went to high school in a suburb outside of Min Minneapolis. I, I think it's actually sad that everyone's moving to the suburbs. I, I think mm. the cities are a vibrant place. I, I love agree. people and I love the vibrancy of cities and the fact that they're being destroyed kills me. <laughs> kills me. I love cities too. I never thought I would ever see the day, but I do believe strongly in no, no solutions, trade offs, as Thomas Sowell always says. And having a daughter just changed my cost benefit analysis of everything. And I was walking around in Los Angeles where I was living and it just, every time we went on a walk, I was dodging some crazy person. There was so much just decay in the city. And I didn't, I, I looked at my husband, I'm like, we don't have to live like this. We so so here's what we've established. You're quoting Thomas Swole, you hate uh, homeless people. So you must be a MAGA. You're a MAGA person, right? You're either all this way or all that way. You're either all in or all out. It's so insane the way we categorize this it stuff. It is insane. And it's, it's funny how if you talk about homelessness as if it's like it, it, automatically people are like, oh, you hate it. It's like, no, I hate what I have to do in order to see that kind of dehumanization I hate everywhere. That those are my patients on the streets. I yeah. know how to treat them. I know that they can be restored yeah. and you are not allowed to in the state of California. Yeah. And what's privileged is their disease and the symptomatology of the disease is privileged in the law. Yeah. So the and any attempt to help them is actually made illegal. That's crazy. It's crazy. Why it's so do you crazy. think this is? It's do-gooders. It's thinking people live their best life. Do it, leave them alone, whatever they want to do. Stuff. They don't have 
any understanding of the human brain and mental health. I mean, zero. Yeah. And they are allowed to prevail, and it is disgusting. It's disgusting. Why are these people allowed to make the those kinds of laws with no experience? I mean, California is crazy. They had this bill, what is it, 665, the one that's now only has to pass assembly and get approved by Gavin, but I'm sure he won't approve it so he can look like a moderate. This is the age 12, your age of 12 thing? Yeah, yeah. this is crazy. Yeah, if you're it's gonna 12, go through. it's going to go all the way you through. You think it's going to mm-hmm. go through? All the way no. Through. Oh, yes. See, my theory. Because that's at least, that is not as crazy as three quarters of the things they do. To me, that's like moderate compared to most of what's going on. I don't on. know. I think that they have him veto it to look like a moderate. No. Well, he may do it just from the presidential. That's what I mean. But normally he wouldn't normally he'd send it right on through oh man so yeah no it's it's it look it's legal to do drugs it's legal to traffic drugs it's legal to steal to support your habit and it's illegal for somebody like me to ask a drug addict to do anything <laughs> and in order to make an ad well you're a recovering person right? i am i mean think I about that think about where your disease would go if I'm not outing you, by the way. You talk about your recovery. Oh, no, then, no, yeah. not at all. Yeah. And so, no, and so, I'm an open book about right. this. Right, and so imagine where your disease would go if there were no consequences. Yeah, no. No consequences and no ability to help me. No one no one who actually has any knowledge could step in and Grab say- Grab you and go, hey, come with me. Let's yeah. Come, hey, stop it. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. You're not allowed to do that. No, no. It's, it's, it's- And I think that's really, truly the feeling I have looking around is there, but for the grace of God go I. There's just this sense of that could have easily been me. If you were in California right now, it would be you. Yeah. So what was your bottom? How did you get uh, finally to it? My bottom? I have had many bottoms. <laughs> as, as, is, as is the custom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that should be a, a memoir book is there is no bottom. Or just um, I've had many bottoms. Yeah, the, the many bottoms. Bottoms I have had many. <laughs> I had my first when I was 19, and that's when I ended up in rehab. And that was, um, I, I was using heroin and everything else. But it escalated from the time that I was around 12, 13 and just kept, kept did you have a, on going. Did you have a trauma history prior to that? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Or during that, yeah. you know, well, it was, no, it's, it's, you know, it's, well, sure. So, so, you know, when you get to the opiates, it's usually because you're carrying pain mm-hmm. and that pain is usually way off in the distance, which is what trauma does. Mm-hmm. It walls it off from your consciousness and the opioids make you feel like you're relieved for the first time. And so you're, it's on after that. And of course the trauma could be when you're smoking weed and drinking heavily also right. at age 12, who knows what the hell, right? I mean, yeah. some adult will take advantage of a drunk 12 year old. Well, back. that's what happened. Yeah. It was, I, I think it was always alcoholism, weed addiction, and then I was drugged and did 17 and then it escalated to the mm. hard drugs and I started using speed and meth and I hated that and found um I chased the dragon really and that was like nirvana for me I, I'm I'm laughing inside a little bit because I, I'm gonna as always ask you to Why? do something that may not be possible Why are you laughing inside? because <laughs> I would like to expose Bridget to fed smoker and to get her, her yeah, sort give me, of, give me a minute. Let me see. Yeah, her stuff. sort of take on a, a real meth user. Uh, we call him Fed Smoker. Fed Smoker. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you'll recognize many, many of your using peers and maybe yourself even in this. Yeah, I was so, not a huge fan of it. Uh, I, my brain already races. I didn't need it to really add any fuel to that. I wanted just oblivion. Did you have an overdose? Um, I don't. I think I had a close... I, I'm wondering what the bottom was. Uh, well, I was out in Los Angeles, even though I wasn't living there at the time, and it was a week of debauchery, and I was doing blow and crack and... Um, good times. Yeah, I think I almost <laughs> had a heart attack in the Best Western on Sunset. I definitely felt, like, very ill, and... It was a lot of, I was in paranoid psychosis and called my aunt and uncle and told them that the feds were chasing us. Well, it was bad. It was really. Well, so that's cocaine. That's a cocaine psychosis. And I was also using heroin at the time. Yeah. So we went to their but the, house. But the difference is a meth psychosis is my family's chasing me. My grandmother's yeah. chasing me. My neighbors are chasing me. When it's a uniformed officer, cocaine. <laughs> that's the way it is. So, I wonder why that is. We don't know, but that's categorically the way it always Interesting. is. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating. Yeah, it was definitely... We were in the valley and there were helicopters, which they're off and All for you. And always all for you. For Did for you ever me. notice when you would see there or you thought you were seeing the uniformed officers where they were when you'd when you'd 
peel the foil back and look out the window? Yeah. Where it, were they? It was always just in the parking lot. Oh, of, you see them down below. What do you mean? Usually, for whatever reason, they're kind of up in the trees and things. Oh, no. I was thinking of the motel that we were oh. holed up in, and it was on one, the, the parking lot level. And okay. so it was Unusual. always in the bushes, though. Well, yeah, always in the trees and bushes, <laughs> always. So. It's so weird how there's those uniform things. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, there were years when I got sober that I couldn't even look at tinfoil without being triggered. Mm. Or and is that because the tinfoil you put on the windows? No, it was from it chasing the dra heroin? dragon. Yeah. So were you shooting the heroin? Or just I didn't. I mm, didn't. And you. this was something I lied about for a long time. You didn't. You felt guilty that you hadn't yeah. graduated Ivy heroin. Junkie, I, junkie <laughs> pride is real. I know it is. It I is know. a real There's thing. There's a junkie culture. There's junkie pride. Yeah. People don't understand this. I felt like I. I mean, I. I told myself that I shot it once, and I told myself that lie so long that I believed it. And it took me five years into this sobriety to be like, why am I hanging on to this lie? So, which is a really common thing, right? <laughs> Two to five years in, people look at things that they did around lying and finally see it, but yeah. literally didn't see it before. Yeah. So, talk a little bit about lying and using, because people think it's some sort of uh, like cognitive choice. Yeah. It's, it's it's more of a symptom feature of addiction. I right? think it's just like being a Russian and under communism. <laughs> like you just have, you're just always having to outsmart the your own lies, but you're also having to keep up another persona. Oftentimes there's this double life and you're trying to outsmart the system, whatever system that may be. Do you and have trouble learning, rem remembering the lies or you would just jump from one to the next, not worry about it? I think I just jumped from one to the next without worrying too much about it. And, and I was pretty consistent in my lie i really believed my lies which is the that's how it goes dangerous well thing. that's the part i you know when i work well with patients i was able to often break through the, on that issue and sort of see the truth through their bullshit because they don't know the bullshit and they will say that like I, how did you know that i didn't know what was real and what wasn't anymore this is something i still don't trust so even as i got into this culture war and i see people and they're so certain and they're out there with their opinions that they're absolutely sure of and i've never because i'm i'm capable i know what level of delusion i'm capable <laughs> of believing and telling myself I mean, I might five years from now be like, I fucking hated the suburbs. <laughs> I was lying to myself. I don't know. Yeah. I, n I never really it's trust called, myself. It's called humility. <laughs> Speaking of uh, levels of delusion, let's just take a look here at our buddy Fed Smoker. Just get a flavor of where meth can hey, take bro, people. I'm on record for a moment. What is this place anyways? Oh, so good. What is this place? Um, you don't need to film me. Oh, I, I'm new to documentary. Listen I don't, here. I don't care. I don't want to be <laughs> This is America, you dumb son of a bitch, okay? <laughs> you dumb son of a bitch. I'm a private person, and I I'm don't want to be I'm a fucking film, American, fuck you stupid film. fuck. fuck. I can fuck ask you anything film. I want. <laughs> I can tell you no anytime I want. You're a fucking baby raper on your face, okay, you cocksucker? You want a baby raper? You're the one who looks like a baby raper. Baby raper, <laughs> Would you chomo. escape from jail? What's up there, chomo? Listen here. What do you guys, how do you get a job here, there, fuck face? Well, not by talking like that. Well, you know what? You're fired, bud. No, okay? I'm not. <laughs> you're talking to me. <laughs> I'm a fucking tough, American, you tough, fuck. Tough you're the one touching teeth. my camera through the Richard fence, Keith, you tough, faggot. On, I'm going to talk to the sheriff's department about you, buddy, okay? Go get him. Go get him. There's a thousand you know classics fire, in this. Okay? You didn't follow proto. What do you, how do you get a job here? You know here? what protocol is? Yeah, I take cops badges all the time doing it. You know who you're talking to? <laughs> a retired double agent there, I'm you fucking retard. <laughs> <laughs> Chomo, Proto, Touch My Camera Through the Fence, all the classics in one little video. So Retired and he, double agent. He, he, he goes around and just hassles people in authority. And, uh, you fucking retard. There's, that's another classic. Uh, I didn't repeat it on purpose, gentlemen. Uh, so. How do you get a job here, there, fuck face? <laughs> and he um, ends up... Uh, cutting his hair with a with a lighter he, oh he just, geez he just does a little oh you know, wow how'd pull you guys find this guy he pulls his teeth out uh, when they get rotted just yanks him out oh my god cool and eventually dies oh. and this is the thing about okay. uh, meth <laughs> well i mean it, 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 <laughs> that escalated quickly <laughs> well no it didn't it didn't that's the thing about yeah. meth. it takes years well before i think you covid got him drew 
Oh, really? I don't think so. That's when you know. That's when things went down. I have a feeling you know maybe he just got sick. I don't think the no, meth did it. No way. He he was found lying down outside his car. Right? Remember? Yeah, but that's where he lives, though. In his car, I know. But yeah. but he he had a cardiac or a stroke. That, that's how meth takes you. Right. But it takes years. And this is the thing about I bring that up because. By the way, if he died of COVID, it would have been with COVID and not of COVID because mm-hmm. he would have gotten short of breath. He would have come to the hospital. No he way. He just couldn't get a respirator or something. I no, think. no, 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 no. I, I mean, mean, I pretty I much can't trust you. people at the, at the hospital, though. True. He yeah. wouldn't trust He'd people. He'd take care of himself right. at the Falcon Car. But when you're short of breath, people run for help, believe me. Yeah. And, and he was just found outside his car. But this is what my point about the homeless, which are. 80% doing meth out there mm-hmm. in addition to heroin or fentanyl, really. Mm-hmm. It's fentanyl yeah. meth out there now. It takes years for the meth to catch up and kill people, and then it starts to go with the cardiac stroke. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Fed smoker. God bless him. Rest his soul. Oh, RIP, you know. Fed smoker. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's another classic, I'm afraid. <laughs> when life gets busy, do not call for delivery. Get HelloFresh. I am in love with HelloFresh. It's 25% cheaper than takeout, less expensive than grocery shopping. You just choose your recipes and you receive fresh, pre proportioned ingredients so you can get to cooking it very quick. The proteins are awesome. The vegetables are fresh. I have become such an enthusiast for HelloFresh. My son, cooked a bunch of, well, two of these recipes, and he went on about how easy it is, and he never before could make uh, uh, sauces, but th- his sauces were beautiful. I thought, wow, something is going on there. Then, last night, Susan made a chicken and pork dish for me. I had it again for lunch. I am in love with HelloFresh. I want you to go to hellofresh.com slash 50 Dr. Drew. That is the number 50, 50-D-R-D-R-E-W, and use the code 50 Dr. Drew, 50-D-R-D-R-E-W, for 50% off plus free shipping. It is America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh. Go to hellofresh.com slash 50 Dr. Drew. Again, it's a different code than usual. Use the code 50 Dr. Drew for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, hellofresh.com slash 50 Dr. Drew. You'd be happy you did it. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices, whether it's dealing with decisions around career relationships. Therapy can help you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate. You can move forward with confidence, enthusiasm, trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values. The more you do it, the more easier it gets, right? And therapy is a great way to practice this. It's also, look, I've been... Ref- working with patients. I've been a patient in therapy. It is helpful. We should take care of our mind and brain the way we take care of our body. Stigma is no longer an excuse. You can't pretend that you're going to meet somebody in a waiting room or you're going to be embarrassed. Take care of your brain the way you take care of your body. It is time. No more excuses with BetterHelp. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash After Dark today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash After Dark. And before <laughs> before the mics heated up, we were talking about how differently our spouses treat their inboxes. Oh, my gosh. And, and it came up because uh, Nadav was giving me shit. Nadav? <laughs> yeah. You're giving me shit about what? Yeah, your phone's at 80%. You don't need to plug it in, homie. <laughs> you see, it's she fucking, thinks that's funny, like it's you. It's fucking morning, and you don't need to plug it in. I get it. If I'm below ninety five percent, I get what below my what 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 ninety five percent. When it's below ninety five, you the day. Drew. When ninety five percent, you the day. I get I get what Nadav's people called spielkas. Nadav's I, people. I get spielkas Nadav's when, when I get people. like that. I. I like to do, well, I do the same thing with my <clears throat> gas tank. I will, my same husband thing. always, I same will thing. ride that thing till the very end. Same thing. One quarter, I, wanna feel I have alive. to fill it up. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, you're like my, my husband. So, <laughs> I'm like, one quarter, let's see how long we can go. And, and my <laughs> wife's inbox has 25,000 yeah, un- like unanswered, mine. unchanged. Just, it says 25,300 or something. I'm like, <gasps> I can't even look at it. I <laughs> cannot husband. look at it. <laughs> my husband and, looked at my desktop and he was like, oh my. Oh my God, <laughs> so, what is wrong with you? And, and so this is this is kind of how gambling plays out too. Interestingly, <laughs> no, listen to me, you'll appreciate this. There are gamblers that don't feel 
don't get satisfaction from gambling unless their back is against the wall. Mm. They have to be kind of losing with very limited left or <laughs> even in debt. To, is that you? I'm They're, just having a realization about my whole life right now. Like I'm never going to get ahead because I need to be like the underdog. You need to be behind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, on the other hand, have to have a huge cushion, a huge cushion of, of free fl- in preparation. And it, by the way, it goes all the way to having shit in my closet and stuff. Oh, yeah. and all, your husband, I'm sure, has all No, stuff. our bedroom, it looks like a, a teenager lives on my side. And <laughs> on his side, it looks like someone who went to the military. But your question military. was, how do we all get yeah. along? I, somebody like me, much the way I drive Nadav crazy, would drive me crazy. I actually dated somebody like me once and it was like, "Mm, no. Too much? Mm -mm. Too much? So that's interesting because I asked the question of my husband how he puts up with me and he's like, I find it endearing. Yeah, I wish I, I wish I could be like that. Now you find it endearing, but I see 10 years, I come from divorce, so I'm like, yeah, 10 years from now, you're gonna be like, get your shit off the floor. How long have you guys been married? (laughs) Not long, like three uh, we got married in 2020, so three going on three years. We're, it, we're newbies. Will, I will predict that because I've been married. I've been with my wife for almost 40 years, mm-hmm. and we've been married for 30 plus. And so you will go. He will go through a phase of that, and then he will be fully accepting and like it after that. <laughs> so uh, that that's something like that's bound to happen. That's sort of the way these things go. It's I'm becoming of, a little more like him, and he's just c- become more accepting of. Of, I mean, I see where he gets it from. I just had the in-laws visiting and oh, oh I was like, you are giving me anxiety. Like the little letters on the fridge <laughs> for my daughter couldn't be askew. It was like, st- I was like, oh, yeah. wow. Oh yeah, no, no, I walk around here adjusting <laughs> the frames and stuff. But that, but that's that's biological, a lot of that. Is it a control yeah. thing though? Mm, yes, but it, it is a certain part of the brain that has a genetic quality. To it. OCD is kind of genetic. Interesting. And, and not exclusively so, but it, and there's a version of OCD that goes with anxiety, right? Yes. And then there's a version of anxiety that goes with depression, which is usually where the addicts are. Like if they get anxious, they start to get depressed. I get hypochondria. Oh, My man. OCD goes into. Okay, hold on, we'll get more of that. I want to get some voicemails about yeah. uh, from our callers, from our from our viewers. Here we go. Voice message. Hey Hitler. Hey. Uh, why is it that the caffeine in cold iced coffee and other cold beverages like energy drinks have so little effect on me uh, compared to the caffeine in hot coffee? Uh, piss on me, beat me. Yeah, you know you have to you have to read through the. <laughs> I have to always read through the lines in these in these many of our questions. This guy sounds really high. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's clearly jacked up on caffeine. So Maybe. what he means is, because the caffeine content is the caffeine content. Uh-huh. And in terms of a stimulant, which it, it de-represses the adenosine system, and so that stimulant kind of occurs, it occurs whether it's hot or cold. Right. But the gastrocolic reflex, ah. the desire to move one's bowels, is enhanced by hot liquid hitting the stomach. Interesting. So what he's really talking about is why doesn't he want to take a shit after the cold coffee as opposed to the hot coffee? Okay. Like, Nadav, huh? huh? I that's mean, it's why. all very interesting. Gastrocolic reflux. But that's really interesting. Then why is it when you smell coffee you need to take a shit? <laughs> I used to need to take a poop when I when I was getting excited about doing cocaine. Oh yeah, yeah. That that that. that <laughs> My happens. husband's like, "What is this?" No, that because everything gets it starts to get stimulated, and yeah. people will vomit too sometimes. Oh, you ever do interesting. That? No, I yeah. never. It was always the the poop reflex. Yeah, I like to use a, the cocaine. <laughs> there you go. For some reason, no, no, I don't hear you in my headset when you talk on mic. Check, but, check, check. Can you hear me? Way low, but hmm. just FYI. All right. Um, all right. Let's get another voicemail. Hey, Dr. Drew and the Booth Boys. This is Austin from Detroit. Shout out to Danny Brown. The show you guys did together was fantastic. So, short version, I'm a recovering alcoholic, and a lot of uh, people in my shoes, like myself, drink an ungodly amount of sparkling water throughout mm. the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking probably like two liters throughout a work day. Wow. Uh, just in cans of LaCroix, bubbly, what have you. Um, it's just water and carbon dioxide, right? Mm-hmm. Like, is there any health risk when it comes to drinking that much carbonated fluid? Yeah. If mm-hmm. it's just water and there's no flavorings, artificial, whatever in it. Okay. So, 
let me know. Am I slowly blowing out my intestines with carbonation, or am I just a healthy queen with some crazy burps? Wow. Thanks, Drew. Love it. I really relate to that. Drinking the carbonated stuff? When I quit drinking, yeah, I, ju- I need, I have a lot of carbonated, like Pellegrino became my, my go-to. And sugar, too, for the first few months, Ooh, oftentimes. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah that's why cravings. everybody chubs up. Yeah, yeah. And they're not doing and, that and cocaine some of that is, is the part of the, the shifting in your metabolism, you know, the, it, where the alcohol was the sugar that was now right. insulin's way up, and boom, you're hungry. For sugars, but to his point, um, really no. There's really not. You know, there's concern about aspartame and sour things like that. A lot of minerals, nah, but it's okay. I mean, aluminum. People occasionally have worried about if uh-huh. there's if you're drinking it out of aluminum can, you know, twelve cans a day kind of thing. That's a lot. You might stick with glass if you can. Or there's worry about plastic, right? The mm-hmm. the forever molecules and the estrogenizing effects of those. All sort of epi phenomenon may or may not be a real thing. The only thing with carbonated ve- beverages that I I'm aware of is it can make reflux worse. Uh. And so if you are noticing, like I was clearing my throat earlier here, that's all reflux stuff. And I do a lot of caffeine and carbonated drinks and okay. uh, had a laryngoscopy once and they were like, stop that. I'm like, no, sorry. Is it hydrating? Yes. Okay. Which so, is good. Yeah, no, I just wasn't sure if it was more or less hydrating than water. The- I don't think there's a difference i can't okay. see where there would be so okay there you go good question all right then let's hear another voicemail and then i'm gonna do an email uh hi mommy jeans this is jeremy from michigan um uh, my girlfriend recently left me because she says uh because i come in her because she's been on birth control but anyways her doctor is saying that my uh because i ingest you know, maybe two to three grams of cocaine a day that uh, my jizz is affecting her lining. Is that a thing? I just don't think it is. Whoa. Anyway, just looking for an answer to my question. Thanks. Yeah, There's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to unpack. <laughs> I agree with you. So, so... Just the, we're gonna we're gonna sidestep his cocaine issue. Okay, <laughs> okay just, we'll, put that, in we'll a, put that we'll put he, that in a box. He didn't ask us about that, so we're not going to address that. I'm assuming he's <laughs> snorting it, which is kind of interesting. It's a pretty heavy habit to stay with snorting. Kind of interesting, right? Most people go to some sort of more powerful way of getting I'm it in. I'm assuming too. I'm gonna assume that she's okay with him coming inside of her. That this isn't like. Yes, he sounded at first like he was going to say that. Like she didn't want it, yeah, and I am, she, which is but really But what he's dodgy. saying is it gets irritating. Okay, it's irritation. Yeah. I'm going to assume that this... But he quickly hinted at her being on birth control. And so the most... And doctors do not address this, and it drives me crazy. The most common reason for women complaining about semen being irritated, they will often... We used to get this on Loveline Forever, which was, I'm allergic to my husband's semen. No, you are not. You have an estrogen deficiency on the lining of the vagina caused by the potent progesterone you're taking as a birth control pill. I hated the pill. Yeah. And so women on these high-potency progesterones often have vaginal irritation. Ah. It may not even be noticeable dryness, but it's enough to cause some irritation from semen, things like that. So that's almost undoubtedly what the irritation is from. But it begs the issue, is there cocaine in the semen? That is a good question, when sir. There's meth in the semen. In fact, it's concentrated in the semen when you're, you're doing meth. Interesting. I've heard of people getting, women swear they get high from their opiate addict uh, uh, male partners. Interesting. I've heard of that. I've never seen much data on that. But it's opioids are pretty widely distributed, so that mm-hmm. makes some, some sense. I don't think cocaine is in the semen. Okay. I don't think so. They don't, we, they don't have any studies on this? <laughs> uh, they do. I could look it up real quick, but I'm not going to. I'm not gonna. Maybe Chad, when he, Chad gets in there, he can look it up for me really quickly. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me talk to a, uh, a email here. Just to prepare you, Bridget, it's uh, entitled Broken Behold. Uh, hey, Hitler. The hey, Hitler is another greeting here. People get upset about it. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I feel like I missed that inside it's, joke. You just saw a bunch of classics from Fed Smoker. There are many other classics yes. out there that result in these aphorisms that people use here <laughs> as greetings and sort of codes for we're on the inside here at your mom's I house. I get it. At what point is anal dangerous? During research on adult sites, there are some people inserting both huge girth but also long dildos all the way. I know anal starts at 50. That's what my wife said. 
Uh, but at what point does it cause irreparable damage, either from going too far in or stretching too far? Touch my camera through the fence, which you just saw, right? Do you understand that? Yeah. Uh, fuck face. Hell so, yeah. <clears throat> so what was that? I just said hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Farming. So, of course, you can tear the anus. You can cause uh, patchulousness to the sphincter, and that can cause problems. You can cause, you know, the the kind of prolapse that people actually make porn about. And I just look at those prolapse things and just think, of it. Tom Segura has played those on the live shows uh-huh. here. And I just think that's a surgical emergency when I look at that stuff. That's like, <laughs> that's like you eventually that's going to cut the blood supply off and you're going to have to operate on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, you can tear, I've seen tearing of mm-hmm. the rectum. I've seen bleeding in the retroperitoneum because of the tearing. I, I've seen just all kinds of horrible things. Yeah. You can easily do horrible things, easily. And when you're doing it and when you're not, I, I don't know what that sort of <laughs> like threshold at, is. What point is anal dangerous immediately? <laughs> right. At any point. What I, I find kind of interesting, uh, maybe you came upon this in your, your years of your time at Playboy, but not all men enjoy this mm-hmm. anal play. Mm-hmm. And women, if they find a guy that does like it, start foisting it on the guys that don't, like insist uh, that you, you're going to like this. And it's like, there's there's like a there's like a divide. Yeah, I did a whole Gentleman's Guide to Butt stuff when I was a Playboy. Of course you it did. was like three part series of for her, for him. Yeah. I did. I learned all about pegging, which I really was not that some familiar with. Some guys are very, very into that. And, and some guys are just not. Let's take a little poll. Uh, in the booth, uh, show of hands. I, mean, I can't see you guys very well from here. Who is into the butt play? Just the general. Okay. Which Who direction is, oh, are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, yeah. How do you mean? That you're the recipient of a finger or a yeah, peg. I mean, or I'm down with the finger in there. Fingering. Maybe anything, uh, yeah. what, did, what did Chad say? I can't quite see him from here. Uh, I guess that depends on how drunk I am. <laughs> okay, so sort of, who who is completely so aversive? Like who is aversive? Not because not because you think it's gay, but because it's <laughs> uncomfortable. Who is aversive to it? Not not any, huh? Any, you're sort of not going to answer me either way. Uh, you know, I think it depends on the situation. So you can go either way. So you're sort of like Chad a little bit. How, I don't how know drunk if I'd you say are? I'm like Chad, but I, you know, you're exactly I like. Go, me, I think it could go either way. <laughs> Was that an insult or something to say you're like Chad? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like be. the booth boys. Uh, now they like you. That's <laughs> all it takes. All right, is it me or my wife annoying? Uh, should I it's not? You. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's something interesting I've never brought up on this show that uh, Adam Carolla and I were talking about. Men typically rarely use the word annoying. Yeah. Rarely, if ever. And women use it all the time. I have noticed that. To describe a wide variety of impingements. Yes. Uh, Adam actually called me. <laughs> I want to share this. He called me because someone in his life just said, uh, I'm at the lake and uh, there's a bunch of d- ducks sitting over on a ledge there and we're looking at this koi pond. And uh, she just mentioned that the ducks must be annoyed by the carp, which is why they're sitting on the ledge sunning themselves. It was like, how would you even, boy, why, how would that word come to mind? That's hilarious. Even? Yeah, that's how, that's how pervasive annoying is for women. And yet when I brought it up to them, I appreciate you being open to this, because when I brought it up to my wife and her peers, they get annoyed <laughs> when I bring oh. it up. They're, they See, they call I, me annoying for bringing up the fact that they use annoying. All the I time. use that word all the time, and I don't think my husband has ever used it. I don't think I've ever heard him. And when a man does use it, he's usually the one who's annoying. <laughs> that's what I. That's what you get accused of. That's right. What does that even mean? What are we? What are you talking about when you say annoying? <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh it is kind of a catch all for. I feel like it's a catch all for. When I am PMSy and don't even know it, it's like things are annoying me. Except, ex- I understand. It's again, I get that. And yet, the the one thing that most men know that if they are called on a date, it's just completely over and there's no going back is annoying. Oh. If you were annoying on that date, if you if, if he's if a woman says, "Hey, he's annoying," you're like, "Oh, I'm like, out. It's just it's done." No way. I wonder, We're not going back from I that. wonder if it's just disgust. Well, it does have a disgust quality to it. Yeah. We'll say disgusting. We'll we'll say something very specific. Yeah. <laughs> but and, and for you annoying, think about disgust is it moves you away. 
that and annoying moves you guys away too you're like Ugh. maybe it's just like a female nice thing like we're really, be, we're socialized to be nicer and so instead of saying oh he's disgusting we'd say oh he's annoying and also self protection you're not offending a guy as much if you say oh he's annoying but if you say he's disgusting you might so what get you're murdered. really saying is women <laughs> underneath are vile and aggressive yes. and they're hiding that they really easily well women are much more easily prone to disgust Interesting. that is true and that probably is a, a and again they're also more prone to agreeableness in all cultures even right. when even when there's you know uh, uh, women in charge of culture they're still more agreeable so agreeableness and disgust, and the disgust may be to for child rearing, to not right. let children get involved with things that could be dangerous or infectious. Right. So that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So is my wife annoying or is it me? Uh, should I not be annoyed at my wife for always questioning, for always questioning, with things like where are you going, what are you doing, how many jobs do you have today, who's texting you, who are you talking to, <laughs> just like all the time. It feels like, I don't know, maybe it's me and she just likes to ask and was just wondering when I wonder if there's a motive behind it, is it just me being crazy or mean or not sensitive enough? Keep them high and tight by Hitler. Ooh, uh, a lot to unpack there too. Yeah, what do you think? Well, it depends on how sketchy he is because I don't get bothered by my husband getting text messages or doing different jobs or all these things, but if I have an underlying suspicion I would if there was an underlying suspicion that he was being sketchy or dishonest. But right. then so, there's so, also so trust, is trust. she is she an extremely jealous person because there's there are people like that who yep. because of their history or whatever yep, they're yep. they might be she might be prone to suspicion and jealousy when there yep. is none. So she's controlling and and uh in, the devouring and, and, when, mother. And, and by the yeah, and by the <laughs> way, when, when people get like that, I always wonder what they're up to. Right. That the, that they don't trust themselves, so they right. don't trust other people. Uh, so there's that, and also there's an OCD flavor to that too. I know I have a little bit of. Again, we've been talking a lot about OCD today. I know that when my wife is just doing stuff, I just kind of need to know. I just it's just an OCD thing. Just, oh, oh, what's going on? What are you up to? It, and I and I and I'm aware that it's annoying. I'm aware of it. And so I try not to do it, but I do it anyway, much the way I plug my phone in. So uh -huh. what, yeah. I'm, you I'm didn't really answer his question though. Uh, is he, he, is, is he, did he say it was, is it me who's annoyed? Annoying? Is that his question? She's annoying. She's annoying. <laughs> she's the annoying one but with all the questions but, she's annoying unless you're cheating on her or being sketchy in right. which case or unless she's cheating because she can't trust herself so she can't trust you but yeah. but she is being annoying let's be fair i mean if it's a lot of that kind of stuff but maybe he's right he ought to address her and say what well, i've noticed you ask a lot of questions what, what's that all about Are you yeah she, have trouble she trusting might me not feel safe yeah right. all of that uh all right let's do another email here uh, my boyfriend won't fuck me for months at a time. This is a good Playboy question. Ooh. The longest being almost six months. He's 33. We've been together for a while, but have known each other for nine years. Now, women f go into deep sort of problem-solving mo mode when this kind of stuff happens. They start blaming themselves. They start trying to understand what's going on. Anything but ask what's going on. <laughs> they do a lot of inventories in their head, right? Yeah, I, this is interesting. I have a lot of female friends who have dealt with this, so I want to hear right. where this question goes. All right, well, this is a good one. He used to have trouble staying hard, but now it's like he doesn't want to do it really at all. It's affecting our relationship, making me feel bad at myself. How do I tell him that if I don't have sex more often, at least once a week, this is something I want to work out, but if I can't, I have to end it. Thanks, James. You bet I'm coming up in May. I was kind of thinking about this this morning. For, for some people, sex is a critical piece of the relationship. They yeah. cannot do without it. I'm one of and, those people. Me too. And, yeah. that, and that's legitimate. That People have to understand that is a legitimate... For whatever reason, people need that to feel the closeness and the glue and the relationship. And, and the, it's like and the, my husband and I will start just like sniping. You know, you get a little like, nah, 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 and it's like, oh, we need to have sex. This correct. is just like sexual tension and it's coming out in a yep. weird like snipey way. Yes, it, it is the kind of the glue of a mm. relationship. And it's also the, the way, you know, it's a kind of a fittedness and a closeness that allows you to accommodate many other aspects of the relationship. Yeah. Helping each other, not being annoying yeah. or accepting annoyance. But so, so he's 33. He had erectile problems already. Look, erectile dysfunction, number one in a middle-aged person, he's barely middle-aged, is a, is a medical problem. That needs to be dealt with immediately. It's and actually is one of the first signs of heart disease. Oh, interesting. And so that should, I was going to say check your be, tea. 
Well, and that's coming. Uh, so, so <laughs> up on the but erectile dysfunction is not necessarily a testosterone thing. Right. Libido is a testosterone thing. So the fact that he then followed no libido it could be literally any medical problem under the sun because you know almost anything, cancer, heart disease, underlying infections can cause this to happen. And what troubles me greatly, and I've said it many times on this show before, is that if you if you uh, go into a doctor and you measure the testosterone, it's it's low, and they just give you testosterone replacement. Th that's like th that's not a, a diagnosis. Low right. testosterone is not a diagnosis; it's a, a symptom. Symptom, symptom. Mm -hmm. and it drives me crazy that they don't get the proper workup done because who knows what's underlying that? Now, obesity can do all of this. This is what I was going to ask. And so I worry fat? about that. Yeah, that was uh, my first question when she when she was emailing. The first thought when she said that was, "Is he fat?" Yeah, because this is, I see this a lot. I've had. It's weird too with women, speaking of women being accommodating, I've had girlfriends in this situation and they'll be going along in this relationship and slowly they'll convince themselves that they're not sexual. They're like, oh, this isn't that important to me to the point that they'll convince themselves they don't even want children. And I'm like, this is crazy. This is just because this guy has some issue he needs to address and you've backed yourself into a situation where you're just so looking at this relationship like, oh, I'm just so glad to have this relationship. Everything else is good. But this seems like a big problem. It, it It's one of the things that drives me crazy about advice shows. And I'm glad you think medically on advice columns and things because numero uno is medical evaluation. Yeah. In almost every situation, it's very rare that a interpersonal problem, particularly of a does sexual functioning associated with it, that there's often not a medical issue or a medication or a depression or something that depression. needs proper, yeah, proper yep. evaluation. And you know, the, we have we have armies of people giving advice that have no medical training, and it just drives me insane. The one thing I I kept saying about Love Line when people would try to recreate it, I, it's it's a medical show. You don't yeah, understand that it's yeah. a medical show. That's what I'm giving you. Is it started as a show to address AIDS? That's yeah. where it started <laughs> because no one was addressing AIDS. Right. <clears throat> I, I took issue with. Dr. Ruth at the time was out there saying, have good sex, good sex. I'm like, have good sex and you're going to die of AIDS. You're not right. addressing the problem here. All right. Anyway, let's go to some calls here. This is uh, Ian. Let's talk to Ian. Ian. Hey, Dr. Drew. How's it going? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm all right. Um, man, it's kind of surreal talking to you. I've been listening to you since I was like 12 in the late 90s. But, uh, Crazy. So that's how I feel. Bridget yeah. too. <laughs> here we are sitting here with Bridget. She feels weird too. This is really surreal for me too. I don't know. It must be, huh? Um, so for a couple months now, um, it comes on and off, but essentially um, with any kind of sexual activity, um, it feels like there's like a bunch of rubber bands around the shaft of my finger. Uh-oh. And uh, are you, yeah, uh, I don't really know what you uncircum it. Are you um, uncircumcised? I am circumcised. You are circumcised. And is there any um, thickening of the, you know, there any spots that are kind of thicker than others on the surface of the penis? Um, you know what I mean? Like a plaque, sort of? anything like that you've noticed? All I've noticed is that like, um, it, it literally looks like there's like rubber bands like cutting off circulation to the head of my penis. I wonder if it's a, a circumcision sort of incomplete, uh, sort of gone bad, and you've got like a narrowing of some remnant of the foreskin, mm. and it's like a phimosis, you know, where the, the head of the penis gets out, but it's still tight around the tip. I wonder about that. I wonder about sort of a Peyronie's type syndrome. You know, you can get these plaques in there that kind of pull one way or the other. Um, all of this very treatable. And so uh, is it causing you performance problems? Yeah, definitely. Um, when it, 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 like I said, it kind of comes and goes. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked to a dermatologist, and they gave me um, a steroid cream. Mm -hmm. But um, when when it is restricted like that, it literally like feel like when I try to retract my foreskin around like the skin around my penis or get an erection, it literally feels like my skin is tearing. Mm -hmm. Wait, I thought you said you were circumcised. I, so I am circumcised, but I'm also um, a poor fat. And, uh, you know, so my I kind of have a fupa. Oh, so you have a retracted penis, which is a whole other thing. 
that can cause irritation yeah. too. Yeah, you definitely see a urologist for sure. This is all highly treatable stuff. Sometimes, believe it or not, you know, one of the things you can think about is a, a, a what are called PDE5 inhibitors, you know, Cialis, that kind of thing. And it kind of improves the blood supply into that area so more of the penis comes out during the day, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and that causes less of the yeah. irritation. So so there's you know at least three different things that need to be contemplated here. One is something like that to help uh, sort of bring things more blood. <laughs> there is an assessment to make sure it's not a phimosis, you know, something needs to be kind of surgically cut there. And then a, a urologist needs to feel the surface there to make sure there's not a Peroni's plaque or something like that, okay? Sorry you're dealing with that. What, uh, a, what okay. a unpleasant yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are these not also a few common symptoms of being gay? Is that also... <laughs> being gay? Is that also a... <laughs> no, I'm never... No, I'm not familiar with that. Oh, oh, oh okay. It's just... It's what my uh, you know colleagues have been telling me. It's, it's my, not my bad. It's the Dov saying that? No, no, no. It's just... No, no. this is completely Eddie. This is just medical yeah. colleagues of mine. You know, yeah. We, <laughs> your <laughs> medical colleagues yeah, call, yeah, yeah. call, 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 call yeah, cons just, penile constriction. <laughs> no, it, this could happen to gay or straight. Gay or straight. I'm surprised the dermatologist didn't tell him to go see. I, I am. I who knows what the dermatologist saw there. He may, he may have seen the irritation from the retraction, uh -huh. and then that's what he sort of treated that first. Then I would imagine they'd see see the urologist, right? So did he, and he, he found bring up poor this, fat? Is that what he referred to himself as? Ian, poor fat. Yeah. What is okay. that? What, I know what, that what does that that's mean? What Tom calls our uh, our fans. Oh, oh fans. Okay, right. Okay, okay. okay. Fat pours, yeah. Uh, okay. Fat pour. I was missing. I felt like I was missing something. The lingo. Like, the lingo moves fast. I'm here. in the cool kids club now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Good luck with that. Okay. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right, let's get to some TikToks. You're gonna watch some TikToks, oh. and you're gonna sort of tell me what you think. Okay. Most of these came in from Christina. God bless her. Oh, is I love this her. this guy again? Sure this, is. Oh, uh, yeah. Good old David Gold. What's he doing? Just showing us his guns and stuff. Oh. With gloves on? Does anybody else know anybody that works out with gardening gloves? <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing to grab a piece of neoprene or something. He's getting ready for the apocalypse. Oh, what God, the heck? He loves just showing himself on camera doing shit. Man spreading. I mean, Hell yeah. TikTok is, it, we have so much mental illness. It really is just a mental illness factory. I don't, I don't understand. Send your complaints to Bridget Fettese, everybody. <laughs> 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 You're right. You're absolutely right. It's like, why? We don't need to see this, Dave, David Gold, other than for people like us to make fun of uh, for content. And he's got to know that this whole world here makes fun of him. Does he not, guys? I don't know if they know this. I mean, mm. the comments of the commenters have definitely infiltrated uh, his page. <laughs> uh, he's got to know. He's, he's got to know. Inkling. Yeah, but, but, but it's maybe like, he likes it. It's negative. It's still yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah. People, these are like children who get attention even if they do something stupid. Let's keep going. What else you got there? <laughs> Three. To Bridget's point. Two. One. This is a yogi. Back. Okay. Well done. So you're in Cirque du Soleil. Yes. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Mm -hmm. Next. All right. But the elephant picture Today behind. Today is you. acting kind of goofy. Today. Uh oh. Jesus. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Calm down, girl. Calm down. It's okay. Wait, is this his pet that escaped? What's happening here? That is a python, guys. Yeah. It looks like his pet escaped. This I, it literally looks like Fullerton or something. It you know, it's like, like Orange How County. How can you tell it's Fullerton? I, it's just like an Orange County <laughs> suburb. Because some sort of palm tree -ish stuff around there. <laughs> Do we know where it is? No. It, it, it does it, look it, like Fullerton. It just looks like Orange County <laughs> suburb. The, the brown lawns and stuff. I mean, who else has a place like this? You can see the palm trees straight back. I mean, This it's, is it's definitely like his pet that he's trying to wrangle. It, does he eventually get the pet, do we know, or this is it? Okay. This is the talk. This is the talk. All right. I'm starting to get worried about Christina again that he's sending these in. Let's see what else you got. I love her. What? About Jesus? Ding, ding, ding. How about Jesus is the greatest? Well, yeah, he is. How about He's Jesus savior, is yeah. number one? <laughs> Can you say that? Number one? He's number one. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for All your right. advice. Recognize that guy? Is it the Fed guy? It's Fed it's, Smoker. Yeah, it's Fed Smoker. What the hell? From beyond the grave, where did you guys find this? Wow. Uh, TikTok. 
<laughs> so this has been circulating out there, and people have with have not shared it with us. Herc, for I mean, yeah, Christina found it. Fed I mean, smoker. there's endless archives of Fed Smoker's work. Like, there's there's never going to be an end to this. <laughs> yeah, we're never going to see right? all the videos. Yeah. It's just whenever it comes Fed across us, that's when we'll find work. it. <laughs> <laughs> like he's Picasso. There's just he, endless. A, he is a certain kind of an artiste. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, there's definitely something. Uh, <laughs> the archives of Fed Smoker's work. <laughs> <laughs> are bottomless. Look, he was an artist ahead of his time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame we lost him. Basically. It is a shame. We oh, lose boy. all the good artists young, though. You know, he had to go out. We would have. We would have met him by now, were he still to be alive. <laughs> we would have found him. We would have met him. He'd be and in recovery. Speaking of which, um, how's my friend out in New York? Uh, RPC. Uh, RPC. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Robert Paul Champagne. I mean, uh, I think a good way to describe it is upset. Why? I don't know. Yeah. We try to get to the bottom of it, but uh, yeah, he's just writing all sorts of mean, nasty stuff on anything YMH or Tom or Christina. And yeah, Oh, I I've got to go in there and talk to him. He's yeah. really upset at Tom. <laughs> Why? Really he upset. won't say. I don't know. I'm not sure. He'll just call but, him, uh, yeah, he's just calling him names what, and stuff. Why don't we, in one of the upcoming shows, like put a call into old We've RPs. tried doing that. Yeah, he won't and answer he says, our calls anymore. I have no interest in speaking to you guys. Oh, it makes me want to speak to him so much more. <laughs> well, just, maybe that's the game he's playing. <laughs> uh, uh, is he have his videos changed or anything? Anything new going on? Is he? Nah, videos are still pretty consistent. Who is this? <laughs> Hold on, it's Robert right. Paul Champagne, another famous artist. Can we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, give me a minute. I'll put something up. <laughs> so, can we uh, give her a little taste of his work? Yeah, yeah. Give me a minute. Let me. All try right. So, he, Robert Paul Champagne is a. Uh, he when I first came on your mom's house. That was one of the first videos that the Tom and Christina showed me. I didn't really understand what I was getting into here. Uh -huh. And a lot of the videos they showed me, to your point about the mental health of America, <laughs> made me feel sad and bad and upset. Yeah. And I was, you know, unhappy for people who were... And this particular gentleman just seemed so sad to me. Yeah. Uh, and he enjoyed playing characters on, on his uh, videos and on his TikToks and things. And... And uh, I became intrigued with him when I actually went and visited him, his apartment, the oh, Upper East Side. okay. And uh, he was even more fascinating than I'd ever imagined. Okay. I mean, he's, he's really an interesting gentleman. But there's a little hoarding, and there's a little isolation, and a little confabulation, and okay. some underlying stuff. I'm not sure what. He is delightful, uh -huh. truly. And the fact that he's unhappy with this world Off makes me unhappy. The total pig. There he is. Yeah, total pig off it comes up is. Officer comes up likes it wild, dirty, and filthy. That's right, officer comes up. We'll take it like a man. I will bend down and you could bang me as you fair as you can. Wow, you got out of that That's apartment right, alive? Come dump here. That's right, waiting for you hardcore guys to call me a call. You need relaxation, you need things. Let me take off my glasses and let me see who I'm talking to. He would just say, you know, come beat me, come, especially criminals, piss on me. Uh, okay. That's sort of his classic sort of thing. This is a, this is one I've not seen. He would claim that, hey, I'm just having fun. I'm just playing a character. I'm uh -huh. just entertaining the guys out there who an get artist. off on this stuff. I'm an artist. Yeah. This is his work. Know, yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to come now. Oh, I'm going to come now. I'm coming. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, baby. Oh, this oh, stuff I just find oh. I just find disturbing. Just disturbing. Oh, yeah. Would you believe this guy's mad at us? So I <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't ex he didn't expose me to any of that when I went to visit him. In fact, he was nicely dressed. Okay. And, <laughs> like, and, uh, wow. But he had costumes all Can't over the place. Can't believe you're not down in a hole waiting for a bucket with lotion. No. No. <laughs> no. He was much more um presentable <laughs> when I saw him and smart guy too not 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 a uh, well-educated man and used to do drag shows in Coney Island so he's like a street performer just on TikTok an artist that's right yeah that's right and who are you black guys who love to fuck and fuck good if you're a hot black guy and you want to fuck me at 23.95 if you want to move in you can move in but you gotta fuck me I need I need to be fucked a lot man Get free food, free rent, and everything else, man. Here's a deal, man. Someone's so, gonna so take that men deal. From jail, homeless, or um, you're a thug. You wanna come, move in. A friend can move with you too, man. <laughs> free rent, you get a lease and a key. Fuck me, piss on me, beat me. I'm home here now. Home you here see now. Me? You wanna come over today and try it out? Try it out, man. 
Oh, God. So try it out, try it out. Try out. This is like walking around Los Angeles. So it's applied only as fuck, man. I'm looking for hardcore guys that mean it and want to do it. And I want to deliver it. I'm a hot, hot white trash cum dump. Let's fuck. <laughs> so, a hot white trash cum dump. So, so, so <laughs> try like it out. Try it out. Try it out. Home here now. These are some of our greetings now at your mom's house. Okay, got this. it. <laughs> but um, it's interesting to me that your response was very similar to Tom and Christina's. I, I was mortified. <laughs> not that I his behavior, not what he's asking for is mortifying. It just was made me sad that uh-huh. he wants to be. What were Tom and Christina's abused, response? Laughing much like yourself <laughs> in a very similar manner. Because I feel like so much of this is so performative. It, it does strike me as at first, I mean, it, it does turn your brain to pudding looking at TikTok. And I do think I don't have it. It's not on my phone. I, I find these things amusing, but it, it, I, it is like walking around Los Angeles and seeing home. It just hurts my heart. Hurts my heart. That's, yeah. where, that's sort of why. Let's see a couple more TikToks. I want to I hurt Bridget a little more before she leaves. <laughs> I want her heart to hurt. Oh my I'm, God. I want her heart to ache when she walks out of here. <laughs> Drew, you're just. Just like us, man. There you go. <laughs> I'm a, I've been... Con- Today, Dr. Carl here, and what I have here is the world's first photograph. What's a photograph, you might ask? Well, it's what you get when you allow fart gas to blow onto a culture plate and you see what sort of bacteria will grow. Ew, now, in the middle, we have big, Lord. chunky bacteria. That's called the IBZ, the initial blast zone. And they are the so- kind of bacteria that you find in feces. This and is on a the German side, for we sure. have the SZ, the <laughs> splatter zone. And they're skin bacteria. The fart gas has blown across the inner skin of the buttocks mm. and picked up some bacteria and landed them on the culture plate where they grew. I bet. This kind of research, oh man, it just blows me away. I actually think this is fascinating. So what he's saying is, so that's going to be staph epidermidis around the splatter zone and then E. coli in the center there. So that's kind of interesting. I did not know that. So I've learned something today. So this is not hurting your heart. Maybe something that else. What else we got? This might. Uh Uh-oh. Frostbite. Oh, yeah. 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 All those fingers are gone. He's going to lose every single one of them. That's true. Thankfully, he'll only lose the tip of his thumb. The thumb's the most important because it's the only one that's opposable, which means you can still grip. Yeah. Sometimes they actually wait till they kind of fall off. Uh, They they mummify and uh, then they sort of debride them at the end there. Why? Why? Why do they? Why are people posting this? Go to the doctor. Don't take a TikTok. I I promise they've been to the doctor. They're they're just (laughs) just just waiting. They're just they're waiting for them to mummify and fall off. Yeah. And, and they sort of they sort of wait for it to organize a little more at the base before they take them off. It just goes better. And uh yeah. So I mean, well, you know, when you have lemonade lemons, you make me lemonade. Sh- show it to everybody. I mean, I guess. This just makes me not want to eat lunch. How's your heart feeling, Bridget? That one doesn't hurt my heart. That let's that affects something. the disgust. Yeah, let's get something a little more emotional. Come on now. Come on, it's now. the sad, mentally ill people. There's a fucking fire in okay, the yeah. freezer, mate. <laughs> fire and ice cunt. Uh. You call the fire a cunt? Is that what he Did said? Did he call them an Irish cunt? <laughs> Let's These hear are that my again. People. Let's hear it again. There's a fucking fire in the fucking freezer, mate. Fire and ice cunt. Uh. Fire and ice. <laughs> Fire and ice. So there's a fire. He's is, is he so wasted that he can't react to the fact that his refrigerator is on fire? I mean, it's. I think even sober, that'd be pretty crazy to see a flame like that. In your he goes and grabs his camera, and records a TikTok. I. It's so weird. <sighs> the uh, level of narcissism in our society is very unhealthy. Which is true, right? <laughs> it's, and, just, and it's sort of like all roads lead to narcissism now. This isn't it? was my this was my feeling about the whole not to like bring up the gender thing, but the you know, I'm generally like parents should be able to make these decisions for their kids' health. Yeah. When it comes to like, oh, with surgery, what? transition, okay. blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then I see these parents on TikTok and I'm like, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. This maybe is all Newsom, about them. Maybe Newsom has a point. <laughs> not Newsom. Like the the I would say the people who are saying that parents can't make these decisions right, for their kids, right, right, because it's like they're it's all about them, and these parents are like, look at me with my kid, it just like the kid is an accessory. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, I feel like so much of the excesses today are about narcissism, one of one degree or another. Instagram has ruined the world. You're not wrong. <laughs> 
You're not wrong. It's ruined it. I know that people don't want to hear this, but... Well, it has hurt the mental well-being of young people, for sure. And then we locked them down, and then we didn't let them socialize, and we just we just did one thing after another. It's like a recipe yeah. for how to really hurt a, a young population. And then we told them if they don't hide under their bed, they go outside, they're going to kill their parents and their grandparents. Because <laughs> if you imagine you're nine and you're hearing that shit. I know. Oh I know. It's It's dark. Should I wrap up? I could talk all day to Bridget. All yeah, right. let's we talk, could. Let's talk about your plugs. So where can they find oh. the pod? Uh, you can find Walk-In's Welcome anywhere podcasts are available, which you will you have been on. Mm-hmm. And you can find Dumpster Fire, it, which is m- more of a show than... You can listen to it, but it's better as a show. And that's on YouTube and anywhere. It's on other places, Rumble, whatnot. And you can find um, me on Twitter mostly at Bridget Fetacy. P H E T A S Y. I have a podcast. What kind of name is that, husband? by the way? What's the? It's name? a. I made it. It's a word I made up for. Um, beyond, what? basically beyond parody. Yeah. What? It's What's a your whole real thing. name? I can't. I'm not going to tell you online. Why? Why do you hide your real name? I don't know. Just. Uh, I just never. I never. You know it's what's a long weird? Story. Speaking of narcissism, that everybody I know in media, not everybody, but the vast, vast majority of people that are have a public figure or a public figure. Don't use their their real name. I, this happened of- before I was in media, so I took that as my stage name when I was doing comedy because I was working with autistic kids and teaching yoga, and I wanted some separation between my stage. We, we and choose- it was a name that. So I originally but, took this name because I started a company called Fetacy. But but that's the reason though that people do it. It's to get, get it you know, like there. I'm over here, and this thing I'm doing is. Well, over here. I started it because I just it was at the dawn of social media, and people were like, "You have to go on social media to promote your company. You have to go on." And since it was a, the company was a word name was a word I made yeah, up. I get it. I took it as my last name just to. I, I, I didn't legally? trust social media. Is it media. legally your last name? Legally? Or no. Just, no. And I, you know, I just, when I first noticed this when we were doing celebrity rehab and uh, every single person that came in did not have their, we had to, we had to find out what their name was. And we insisted on calling them by their name. Mm. And we started, that's where we started. And in many cases, that was a shock to them that we were calling them as who they really are. Very, very weird. I really like the separation. Yeah. No, I think it's not a bad thing necessarily. But like Bridget, who's, Cleaning up poop in the my dog's poop in the backyard. It hey, feels separate. Then. The reason I didn't say Dr. Pinsky is I didn't want people to be think I was promoting myself. I right. wanted to do the job of talking about HIV and AIDS and other things, and didn't want people to associate it with me. I just right. wanted to do it. But uh, then this became a whole thing. So here we are. (laughs) All right. Thank you, Bridget. Great to see you. Thank you for Um, having me. This was great. It has been great. uh, And uh, yeah, we'll see everyone next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.